Good afternoon everybody this is Sangeeta Saxena editor Aviation and Defense Universe getting you live from Delhi we are at the India International Center and we have with us a man who needs no introduction we have with us the executive committee member and the former chairperson of LNT Defense uh, Mr Jayan Patel Mr Patel wonderful having you here it's been such a long time now near real year and we're looking forward to this you are here with another hat and it's not the LNT hat at the moment and this is the Indian National Academy of Engineering is 38 foundation day and uh, just the right place to have caught you so welcome to ADU's chat room looking forward to you know having this interaction with you thank you thank you uh, sangeeta ji and now let me just when we as we continue and we talk of your so many hats it'll be wonderful to understand from you what is this hat you're wearing where we are now meeting the indian national academy of engineering was created uh, under dst in 1987 i mean dst took it over a little later it was created by the the best known engineers in the country and uh, primarily these engineers have been one of those who have essentially achieved a lot in the field of engineering science technology engineering and this is an institution uh, i must say an ac- academic uh, sorry uh, uh, institution of a very different kind it's called it calls itself an academy now this academy only has on any given day about 1000 fellows now each of the fellow must be someone who did some amazing work in the science and technology relating to engineering so conversion of science to technology through engineering and you can actually see the thousand fellows primarily into three baskets the academicians who have been top end kind of uh, people who achieved a lot in science then the obviously engineers uh, primarily in, from industry that's the smallest uh, i would say group uh, in terms of industry people it's about 22% of uh, the fellows from uh, what come into uh, ina from industry and the third bucket is where all the strategic sector of india call it the defense the nuclear space and this is exactly where this thousand fellows on any one given day is so this academy about somewhere in 1991 was put under department of science and technology and dst has been funding this institution all through and this is what is the ina 20th april was the day ina was registered in 87 so today happens to be our 38th birthday and that's essentially where uh, the, almost i would say the entire uh, current top team along with the past presidents we all met we had the kind of a small function and of course an associated green hydrogen seminar which was continuing in that joining room and this is one hat the other hat we met about a week back at the space event the indian space association yes, event i'm and the president founding president i must add that of the indian uh, uh, space association and uh, again relates to the same strategy sector the space body uh, as lassen dubro we been working from 1971 and uh, we are we are proud to have actually built the first rocket that of kalam flew so the first uh, i would say an object that left indian space india built had to a booster which was done in lassen dubro and this has been the association with the strategic sector even before on the nuclear sector and then space and subsequent to 85 into defense which is essentially why some of us uh, obviously created a lot uh, for the country and some of us actually then became the fellows of ina uh, currently obviously ina felt that uh, the industry portfolio in ina needs strengthening and that's essentially where uh, I'm currently the vice president. I'm supposed to look after the international relationship and corporate memberships. That's wonderful, you know. And in addition to that, everybody knows that Mr. J N D Patel is with L N T Defence. That's his baby. But in addition to that, we know that you have a lot of other babies within L N T. So we'd like you to talk about them. So L N T Defence, I created. Um, uh, also, spent some time on looking after the space sector. and uh, much later 
uh, I would say typically about last uh, 10 years, we've been one after another creating a lot of incubations. So lots of Elantis new initiatives have been incubated and some of those I had the privilege of looking after. Some of these include uh, the, what we call as the Elantis Smart World. After Prime Minister Modi in 2014 announced our smart cities and the 100 smart cities were to be created, we ourselves created about 27 smart cities and at that point in time we had hundreds and hundreds of high-tech applications, use of digital technologies and this is what we at that point in time felt is now ready to be taken to the globe. And this is what at that point in time was merged into another sister company within Las Antubro called the Mindtree. And the Mindtree then merged with LTI and it became a LTI Mindtree. So the smart world business today is part of LTI Mindtree. The yet another incubation which I did at that point in time was we call the LNT Next. Again leveraging hugely digital technologies, IoT, uh, geospatial applications and varieties of kind of those high-tech things, uh, video analytics and things like that. And this is where we merged it into yet another business of La Santuro, which is uh, uh, LNT Technologies. Now LNT Technologies and LTI Mindtree typically do about 98% of their business outside India. And these technologies are today gone uh, global as a result. Currently, of course, I do. Uh, besides looking after the defense and the space businesses, I also look after the incubation of LNT semiconductors. And uh, these are all major things which are happening in LNT. LNT has had seen a very major breakup into 18 companies earlier. So now, how many companies are there in LNT altogether? In fact, uh, Lassen Dubro's growth, uh, one can see very peculiarly, has come out bulk of it organically. We have not really acquired many companies. So when uh, somebody comes out with some new idea, we, we allow this person to say that, yes, as long as you can scale it and grow it in a given possible time, uh, go ahead and do that. So all the 18 verticals that uh, you just mentioned, uh, we actually created 18 verticals because each of these verticals were physically of a size beyond few thousand crores per year. Now, when you reach a scale beyond certain uh, value, uh, you need a specific top management attention and this is where they were given a status of full-fledged vertical. So the head of this business typically then would be a member of the executive council. One or two of such verticals would be under each person and some of them used to be on the l and board. So that's exactly where I used to be on the board as well as on the executive council. And I used to look after the space, the defense. Within defense, we looked after about five, six businesses, including the LNT MBDA business, which you are aware of the joint venture that we created. And of course, now also looking after the semiconductors. Where we differentiate in semiconductor business with respect to anybody in India is very peculiar. Uh, most of the people are talking of either the packaging end or the pure fab end. Now, if one truly maps the entire, uh, I would say, value chain of semiconductors, we believe 75% of the value chain is before it goes to the fab or the packaging. And the 75% of the value chain, there is nobody who looked after. What Lassen Dubro decided is being the technocrats and engineers, and we always believed in indigenous technology. Entire growth of Lassen Dubro's 18 verticals is on our own technologies and our own strength. We hardly ever bought technologies. Now, given this, we decided in semiconductors, we'll connect with the customers, understand what the customer, I would say, what, he, what would be his dream requirement. And from that dream requirement, start conceptualizing and creating a product and then go into the engineering aspect of designing a chip, testing, actual layouts and things like, and thereafter you would actually run it through a fab. Now, what we decided is we focus on the 75%. The fab and the packaging will go out. So you might actually see those who put up the fabs or the packaging units, we'll use them for the balance 25, last 25% of the business, 
we want to be a product company and not the service company. The manufacturing in case of electronics become more like a service. So the fab and the packaging become the service ends. So that's essentially where the semiconductor differentiates and that's exactly what we are right now trying to create. Right, and you know when we get back to your uh, core company, uh, LAT Defense, now one major uh, thing which we wanted to understand was you know it's a big achievement for L&T we're seeing very frequently now ships coming for their maintenance uh, to the uh, L&T shipyards what is uh, this process and uh, is it a marketing exercise which L&T is doing very strongly or is it the uh, one to one relationship between two different countries which gets uh, the privilege to L&T what is it basically before uh, the foreign ships or rather the US and the UK ships which have up till now come and some more are in pipeline of course uh, the shipyard was something which we decided to build uh, like every business of uh, ours in defense each of those six verticals we have been doing the basic design in india one thing again differentiates us in the entire defense sector is we did not do a one rupee sell in any vertical before we had 100% design capability in house so in ship building we actually created first a ship build ship design so we incubated ship design way back in 2007 and in 2010 we started bidding and started winning the ship building orders then in 2010 to 12 we actually designed and built a shipyard within house we had no international consultant if one goes and visits the shipyard probably it's one of the best shipyard this part of the world ever could have seen and probably better layout and in terms of digital uh, depth in the shipyard we have only shipyard which essentially has entire operations in industry 4.0 A design server sits somewhere else. You cut a metal, cut a pipe, cut cut a uh, you know cable, all of it digitally uh, through the uh, server connectivity. One hundred percent design in three dimensions in digital domain, and that's exactly how the shipyard operates. Now this is precisely where uh, the shipyard differentiates. Now this is a capability which everybody who comes to evaluate Indian shipyard actually sees. Second biggest differentiators for us in the shipyard is. we have a gigantic ship lift we can lift 22000 tons to be precise 21600 tons we can lift in matter of 3 hours from sea to land and then you pull a ship on to land and then because she is on land the amount of people you can put it on the job to finish the job very quickly which you can't do in a dry dock for the fear of flooding and the control and variety of other things that come in the productivity in this shipyard becomes very very different ability to lift and lower a ship within a matter of hours and that's essentially the differentiator now this lift ship lift incidentally is not purchased it is in house built so these are capabilities of the company which we all leverage together now anyone who is coming because government of india is obviously talking been talking to the us for varieties of uh, logistics kind of support now indo pacific actually opened up these opportunities now the indo pacific means there's 160 vessels of united states in this zone out of those zones they will need routine maintenance and kind of repairs and that's essentially where they come to the shipyard they find it so convenient it's almost at the southern tip at mm. near chennai yeah they come in park there Two weeks, three weeks, they go out, and uh, the day they come in, they have the every possible support because we we know that the shipyard is highly modularly built. There are separate uh, kind of uh, workshops for repairs, refit, separate workshops for the new build. Now this is what creates the ecosystem for anybody who comes in, who loves and gives out a kind of certificates that uh, the kind of support we got. so that's the same situation which happened with the multiple ships that came from uh, united uh, states and uh, naval uh, services also same thing happened with the uk ships obviously that as a part of the occurs uh, there is a large population of these vessels and of course they will keep coming to our ship and you know these ships also have flying assets so what happens in that case do when they require a mro activity is lnt sufficient or has lnt tied up with some military mro 
uh, in India which can do that part of work for them? Right now, of course, the, the ships have uh, actually not come with uh, uh, helicopters and things like that. So probably what they do is before the ship uh, comes for a refit, uh, the flying bird is taken away. Because uh, they can do it separately somewhere. Primarily it's the uh, hull related work, piping, varieties of things, some maintenance on electronics and varieties of other equipment which is within. And that's essentially what happens at the shipyard. Yeah. And we had a big uh, K9, uh, you know, it was a big facility as far as we, we saw it once. And what is happening to that facility now? Uh, is there a refresh order? Do you have a follow on order for it? Or are you expecting one? So, what can we get new on that subject? In fact, the K9 Vajra, you, re you said, you know, mm. it's truly a remarkable uh, success mm. because. Uh, if we had, like everybody else, taken a foreign equipment and fielded it in India, I can tell you it won't pass one trial. And those thousands of trials that it had to go through, we realized by looking at the equipment that it needs a dramatic change. Now the good part was uh, here the partner was absolutely open, saying that I'll give you one system, you do what you want. And that's exactly why Vajra is a success because we did enormous number of changes in Vajra and every change was engineered and designed in India. So okay. the basic vehicle remained the basic vehicle which obviously was Korean technology but every engineered change actually happened here including the entire intelligence behind the firing was indigenous. Okay. We made it NBC, we made it auto loaders. The auto-loading we made far, far more efficient than the kind of auto-loader the Koreans used to have. So, K9 Vajra has been one of those amazing success stories, primarily for a reason that uh, Indian Army has been trying to look for buying this kind of self-propelled gun right from 90s. They know multiple RFPs came, uh, didn't succeed. At some point in time, after seeing that uh, no foreign equipment works, we also had seen the Korean uh, system. And we realized that this Korean system won't pass. Uh, the good part of this relationship with the Koreans was they said, feel free, make changes, whatever you think, because you know your environment better, you know your user better. And we made very, very large amount of changes in the Vajra to make it fit for desert fighting. So right from Gujarat to Punjab and Jammu Kashmir, Jammu related, I won't say Kashmir, this region we could fight including the deserts. Now to make that happen, uh, were very peculiar changes, the entire intelligence behind the fire control systems was indigenous, including algorithms. And this was a need because India has 10 types of ammunition to fire. Most foreign equipment can deal with one or two types. So we have a fire control computer which can actually is 10 computers built into one hardware. And similar when we see uh, uh, firing, I mean, in NBC conditions, you can fight to doing the auto loading far more efficient way and things like that. So, this is a system we created which safely can do five uh, firings in the first one minute and probably be ready for the sixth. So, somewhere between within first two minutes, uh, you can actually cross uh, uh, 11 firing. So, normal requirements of army that within three minutes you must do 13 to 15, we can do more. The Vajra version which was essentially created, call it desert fighting, uh, we actually made this uh, system good to be fighting in the high altitudes and under low temperature conditions. So obviously the, the army was very very happy about uh, this conversion and they really took it upon themselves to take it to those regions without keeping in mind that uh, this is a desert version vehicle and if there is any problem somebody may get blamed. And uh, obviously, that kind of boldness, uh, backed up obviously by a large team that we had sent to support and do the trials in that region. And uh, I think apart from this, uh, we you also spoke about MBDA, one of uh, our favorite topics to discuss always. What is the status of the joint venture? MBDA joint venture, uh, you are aware that uh, the Rafael launchers we built in uh, Indian uh, joint venture factory. So is the case with uh, uh, some of the hardware for the missiles which are fitted onto the same fighters. Now, 
as more or less those orders got over, we started positioning for future, uh, I would say, systems to be produced where uh, you know, a fifth generation anti-tank missile is right now what we know that MBDA had it and MBDA has uh, developed this and they are the only ones in the world who have a fifth generation anti-tank missile. So what we decided is rather than just a TOT and bringing that uh, missile into India with MBDA's uh, as a joint venture partner uh, with their support, we will create an IDDM fifth generation anti-tank guided missile in India. So there are two, three programs like this uh, uh, ATGM. There are some of the other coastal uh, missile programs and of course some of the air defense things which are being currently targeted through the JV to be done under the IDDM mode. So there is a design team which is being put in uh, and it's already is in place and they're working on these two, two or three programs. In addition to these two, three programs, in the JV we are also now today trying to do some amount of work on maintaining what is previously delivered to the Air Force. Because for the through life support of earlier supplied system, now they don't have to go out of the country, they can be done right here. So one, as I said, uh, creating the IDDM capabilities in the new generation missiles. Second, of course, the life support related part. And we are readying to do bigger stuff through the joint venture. And I think, you know, this was wonderful uh, talking to you about so many new things, Mr. Patil. It's always been nice, it's always a pleasure. But this time, actually, because it's so good to see you with so many hats. And I think, you know, it's wonderful the way you've been expanding and the way LNT has, you know, gone between and beyond shores. It's just wonderful. And so nice to speak with you. Next time that we meet for another event, I'm sure you will have lots more to tell us. Thank you Thank so you. much.